Well, hello and greetings from Paros, Greece. You know, Paros is known for two things. It's stunning beauty and traditional villages. So in this video, I thought I'd go over two anchor locations on the island. First is the Bayside capital, Perikia, where I'm staying. And then just a short ride north, northeast on the island, you reach a town called Nausa, which is this fishing village that has really gotten a makeover in recent years and really high-end shops and restaurants and just gorgeous scenery around the harbor. So I thought I'd show you those two areas and the uh, best way to get started is to get started. So let's start in Perikia near the port. So I'm here at the port on Paros, and even though it's busy and might be a little hard to hear me, I thought it'd be helpful if you've never been to the island to see what you see when you come out of the ferry port. So with that in mind, there we go. You have a windmill in the middle, which is an information tourist desk. And it's also a good meeting place if you have to meet an uh, Airbnb host or another party. Just say meet at the windmill in the center and they'll know what you mean. And then if you go to the left, along the water, you have the harbor just to the left. So if you're renting a boat or meeting a charter, that's where you're going to want to go. And then about five or six hundred meters down is a beach. And in between the beach and here is just a series of hotels, restaurants, shops, cafes, that kind of thing. If you go to the right, the bus station is to the right about, oh, 50 or 100 yards down to the right. And if you continued along the water, again, hotels, shops, restaurants, cafes, and about seven or 800 yards down, is a little beach area. If you go straight out of the ferry port, you'll have some hotel stays down there, but it's mostly shops, restaurants, and cafes. So, I thought that'd be helpful. Um, I think where we'll start is to the right, and then we'll go to the center where the shops are, and then we'll go down to the left side from the ferry port, because uh, that's where I'm staying, and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so we're at the bus terminal. We started about 40, 50 yards down at the ferry entrance. Made a right. And this brings you to the bus terminal. Buses are pretty affordable on the island. They have a really good schedule too. I'm here in May, so not even the high season. And uh, there's a number of locations around the island that the bus goes to. Um, to give you an example of price, when I go to Nausa, it costs less than four euros round trip. Um, but, you know, if you go farther than that, it might cost you, you know, maybe eight euros round trip. Um, it really depends, but uh, I'll put a link in the description for the bus station and their routes and schedules. So check that. They also have car rentals and scooters and ATVs and dune buggies and everything under the sun and all different price points. Um, so I won't break that down in this video, but again, check the description. I'll put some links on some research I did and that'll help you out or hopefully it'll help you out. So as we continue down the road, after we took a right from the ferry terminal, we walked past the bus station and the rest of the way to the beach, uh, I thought I'd just put together some clips and a little montage. It's easier to digest that way rather than uh, me just walking around for 10 minutes. So anyway, here's what you can see when you go to the right side from that ferry entrance.
Now as I watch the ferry pull out, I thought I'd take this opportunity and talk a little bit about the ferry prices. Um, first, check my description. Again, I have some research links on where to get a ferry and comparing rates between the different companies and different routes. That said, um, I flew into Athens and then stayed in the port city of Pyrrhus. And from Pyrrhus, I took a ferry to my first island, which was Milos, which was scheduled to be roughly a two and a half, two hour, 45 minute journey. And it cost about $80. Um, turned out to be a four hour journey in rough seas and I got sicker than a dog, but that's a different story. Um, but it really depends on what island you go to, to the next, the time of year, the type of ferry that you take. Um, so there's a lot of factors, but you know, it could be $80, it could be $15 if you're going from Paros to Antiparos, it could be less than 10 euros. So it really depends. Um, just check the ferry hopper link in my description and uh, you'll be able to do all the research. They have a really neat feature, by the way, on whether to check prices for just one route, but they have a island hopper feature where you can have five different routes that you can kind of coordinate at once. So anyway, just thought I'd mention that. All right, well, we made our way back to the city center near the windmill and ferry entrance. And I thought what we do now is cross the street and see some of the winding back streets with the whitewashed buildings and shops and restaurants and cafes. So you can get lost back there. And as you go along the waterfront, if you go inland from there, you pick up this system of you know, back streets that I'm about to show you. So anyway, it, it's fun to spend hours just walking around and seeing the sights in here. It's, it's really unique, especially if you're not from this area. So let me show you around.
back in the city center after checking out the shops and restaurants and cafes. And it's always an interesting time when the ferry just arrives. The downtown area gets pretty crazy for about 15 minutes. And I thought what we do now is continue to the left. We've seen the right and across from the ferry. And now I'll take you down to the left. This is actually the area that I'm staying in. And it's got the boat harbor and lots of restaurants and cafes. So let me show you around the left side if you, or I should say if you take a left from the ferry entrance, this is what you see. You know, I thought I'd just touch on pricing, uh, how much things cost on the island of Paros. And I won't be too exhaustive on this because it's a big island. There's a lot of price points you can cover and everyone travels differently. But for me, I'm a budget traveler, right? So if I come off money, it's going to be for the value, right? Um, that said, I can have a nice euro or street food for a lunch and do that for three or four euros. Right, so that's one meal. For dinner, if you wanted to do something a little bit more fancy or sit down, maybe an appetizer and a main course with a bottle of water, you can do that for 15 to 20 euro easy. And that will depend on whether you get something basic like a pasta dish or if you get a whole fish. So it ranges, but if you wanted to budget for a nice sit down dinner per person, 15 to 20 euro, I think, would cover it. It's nothing great if you want some of the whole fish on the menu or a lobster or some of the fancier stuff that's going to run you more. But uh, I think 15, 20 euro for dinner is good. Uh, that's five for lunch. So you're at 20, 25 euro. Uh, for breakfast, I usually have banana and yogurt in the hotel I'm staying at. Um, so, you know, add another three, four euros on that. That'll give you an idea. If you go out and party and, you know, all that stuff, you know, sky's the limit again. So, again, it's, it's not cheap, but 30 euros a day as a budget for just food, I think is very doable and you won't be sacrificing anything. Uh, again, everyone travels differently, so, you know, your mileage will vary. Um, and then on accommodations, you know, the sky's the limit. You can go inland um, and get something on the low range, 25 to 40 euros a night. Um, where I'm staying is less than 50 euros a night, and it's a block inland from the beach. And so it's about 500 yards from the ferry and 50 yards from the beach, something like that. Um, and it's a nice place. Um, I'll do an insert here maybe where you know, I cover the outside. It's a nice you know, whitewashed building with orange shutters and it's run by a, a nice family and it's clean, it's safe. And as you can see, you know, it's just a nice little hotel room that uh, is moderately priced. So I found the value there. Uh, so I spent a little bit more than I normally do. I like to stay around $30 American, but on the island of Paris, that's a little bit tough to do. So, anyway, um, and then just a note on actually eating out, um, you know, again, maybe I'll, I'll put some footage up as I'm talking about this, but as you're walking around during the day, all the restaurants, or I say all, most of the restaurants have a menu out for you to look at. Um, so just take pictures or browse the menu as you're walking around during the day and, you know, just think about where you want to eat that night. So, there's a wide range from surf and turf and everything in between, so you won't lack for options. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. I hope it was helpful.
Okay, well, we made it down to the beach, and that will about do it for our video on Perikia. Um, it's definitely a town worth visiting. Uh, you probably see it anyway when you get off the ferry, but uh, I'm staying in Perikia, and I can tell you there's a lot to do. You can walk around for hours and hours every day, like I have been doing, and you just don't get bored of what you find. So, Perikia, put that on the list if you're in Paros for sure. Uh, so, what's next? Uh, I think we'll get on a bus and go to Nausa and check that out. So let's go. Okay. We are here. bus. We're now in Nausa. And this is what the bus terminal looks like. Nothing fancy. They save that for the waterfront. So, if you want to do, start heading down that way. Well, welcome to Nausa. And uh, in this area of the video, obviously, we're in Nausa, so um, I thought I'd start on top of the bridge. It's kind of the center point of the downtown area, and uh, I'll start and just kind of point out where we are and where we're going to head, so the rest of the video might make a little more sense. So we came down that road from the bus terminal, and I'll insert a little picture of the stone bridge I'm standing on. To the right of that stone bridge is the start of the shops and the winding back streets that I'll show you. On the opposite side of the stone bridge is the harbor. And to the right, if you follow that around, is the fortress. And then like a little tiny area of the harbor that is kind of the Instagram area. And to the left, is a small beach on the other side of these buildings and then a big mountain of whitewashed buildings that are hotels and different places to stay anyway that's where we are today in nausa and uh let's walk around i'll show you the place starting on the left side of that stone bridge that we were at if you follow that down about 150 yards Along the water, you come to a little path that you take. It leads you to this nice little secluded beach. And on the elbow out there, there's some rock formations that you can crawl around, especially on the other side of that. Behind the beach, which is also accessible by a road behind those trees, is just a mountain of whitewashed buildings that are hotels and rental properties, things like that. So it's a nice little area, nice and private. Um, so I have some footage that I took of the beach and the rock area and the hotels up on the hill. So I think I'll run that in a montage. And just a tip on the beach, you might want to bring some sandals because it's not like powder sand. It's a mixture of coarse sand and rocks and pebbles. So. You know, if you got sensitive feet, you might want to bring some flip-flops with you.
one thing you have to do in Nausa is walk around the shops and back streets and it is pretty manicured in this area for the tourists. So let me show you around this area. It's, uh, it's fun to spend an hour or two walking around and do some shopping. The third area I'll show you on Nausa is the harbor and the eating area. And it's probably the most recognizable because it's on Instagram and social media the most. And that's just because it's so pretty and this guy with the fresh fish coming in. Anyway. Like I said, this is a really popular spot, so let me show you around.
Well, that will do it for our time in Nausa and also wrap up our video on Paros. I hope you enjoyed the video. We started in Perikia and when we got off the ferry, showed you around that area and then hopped on a bus ride to Nausa and showed you around the harbor and that area. So I hope you have found it informative, entertaining, all the above. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be going to more islands and you'll be notified when I post those videos. Check the description area for links on finding a ferry and where I stayed. And until next time, I appreciate you. Be you and be groovy.